Farming is a family affair for Keith and Viv Richards. They took over the farm from Viv's parents 26 years ago. Now in their 60s, Keith and Viv are looking to their future. Keith is still passionate about developing the 9,000 stock unit breeding and finishing property and struggles to make time away for more than a night or two. He admits to losing energy by the end of the week and recently had a close call with the tractor. Viv is keen to spend more time at their beach house and would like to revamp it for the extended family. Their eldest daughter, Christine, is settled in the USA, married with two children and has a successful career as a lawyer. Their son James got an ag degree, then spent a couple of years shearing. He came home eight years ago when his parents purchased 314 hectares from the neighbours. Happily married to Jess, a dental therapist, they have two preschool children. The youngest daughter, Sam, is a diesel mechanic. She enjoys bringing her family back home to the farm when they can. Keith and Viv are conscious that James enabled them to purchase the new block, and his energy and knowledge is taking the business to a new level. Keith feels compromised between still wanting to contribute physically, but is conscious of robbing the next generation of their opportunity. He thinks it is now Viv's turn as she was recently appointed to the National Council for Rural Women. Living nearer the airport would make travelling easier for her. As parents and business owners, they want to secure their own future, reward James for his past and future endeavours, and pass on a legacy to all three children. This is the story of one family's path of succession planning and how they navigated the many minefields that could tear a family and the farm business apart. Through their bank manager, the Richards were introduced to a succession planning facilitator. They arranged their first family meeting to coincide with Christine's visit back to New Zealand. Using an independent venue away from the farm and an experienced facilitator took a lot of pressure off both Keith and I. We had an agenda to follow and were free to actively listen to what our children had to say about the future of the farm business. I was working on the farm, but full-time farming wasn't the future Jess and I wanted. The meeting was a good chance for me to share my plans to get into a role with a cropping contractor. Keith and Viv had always been aware James preferred ag work to stock work and so weren't surprised when he shared his hopes for his future. His sisters were a little surprised, as they thought James and Jess had come home to the farm for good. Both Christine and I respect that James wants to pursue work he will really enjoy, just like we've done. It's great he's been able to share that with us, as it wouldn't have been easy. Despite James's news, the family all agreed they wanted to retain the farm as a legacy for future generations. The initial challenge was how to provide some capital for Keith and Viv to shift off farm and get established closer to town. By the end of the meeting, the family had agreed to research three options. Leasing the farm out, bringing in capital in the form of an equity partnership, or amalgamating with another local property to get efficiency of scale and improved performance. Keith, Viv and James were charged with preparing some informed comparisons for the next meeting. Conversations with farming friends, their bank and a local farm consultant provided valuable information on the options. James found the Beef and Lamb New Zealand website presented some good material on leasing and equity partnerships. Five months on, the findings were presented at another family meeting. Christine joined via Skype. I was not happy with the lease option. Firstly, because I didn't want to sell three generations of established genetics on the open market. Secondly, I felt nervous about how well the leasee would look after the farm. The amalgamation with another local property had been investigated, but due to either lack of scale or most neighbours sharing a similar predicament, it was shelved as unlikely. The equity partnership was shaping up as the most likely option. This would release some capital to set up Keith and Viv in a new home in town. 
Other benefits included the injection of new ideas, retaining the livestock on the property, and maintaining a sense of control. Financial budgets had been done on three- and five-year projections. Through these, the family were reassured they would have the option of purchasing back full ownership should they want to. met again to discuss how to move forward with selecting the best partnership team. Discussions with their banker and local farmers had identified three possible partnership candidates. Christine suggested the interview process should involve an independent person who had human resources experience. They also felt they should provide the applicants with a copy of the farm business plan and ask them to present their ideas and financial projections for the next five years. Viv recommended that further legal and accounting advice would be sought before anything else was actioned. The family also recognised the applicants needed to conduct their own interview of the family to establish if this was a business and relationship they wanted to be a part of. process, the Richards agreed that Mike and Susan were the best candidates. They drafted an equity partnership agreement using the guide provided on the Beef and Lamb New Zealand website. This then went to their accountant and lawyer for review. With the assistance of a farm consultant, the equity managers and Richards family met to flesh out a new business plan and governance structure. Both parties agreed that an independent accountant, a bank manager and farmer, with board experience, would sit on the governance group for the first three years. The partnership would begin in three months' time. Fifteen months later, the family all met up for Viv's 65th birthday. During lunch, conversation reflected on the journey the family had been through. Keith summed it up nicely. While initially we didn't really know what the future held, Bringing Mike and Susan into the business has opened doors which we didn't expect were possible when we began. Mike has brought a number of new ideas to the business. Through soil testing, we've reduced our fertiliser costs and improved stock production. Having Mike and Susan join our business has been a very positive step for our whole family. Mm -hmm.